this is our second Ask a Scientist live event and it's brought to you by Extinction Rebellion Scientists. We see in surveys across countries and across U.S. states that when the message clearly was stay at home and when stay at home orders were implemented, people were following that and you saw the success of that message in the curve of hospitalizations being flattened. Um, now the countries are opening up, the messages are becoming more mixed and people are more confused and uncertain about what to do. And I think there's a lesson here for climate change, because with climate change, I think the lo a lot of the messages about what you can do about it haven't always been so clear. We found that people who are motivated to do something about climate change when they're making food decisions uh, tend to focus on reducing packaging. Again, that may be a good thing, but the biggest thing you can do to reduce your carbon footprint in your food decisions is to eat less meat. So the so idea that the government should be intervening to change individuals' behavior, to get businesses to, to change what they're doing. This kind of um, sort of interventionist uh, approach that's, that seems to be required if we're taking climate change seriously is, is very threatening, I think, to people that hold that more kind of um, uh, free market, kind of right of center uh, ideology. Um, when we did some work kind of trying to reframe the issue, uh, to say to talk about other sorts of benefits to tackling climate change, for example, that there might be green jobs, uh, there might be some benefits to the economy, that maybe there would be some national um, national security benefits, for example. Those sorts of ways of talking really resonated with those groups. Um, and actually, we found that it reduced their skepticism when we talked about climate change in that way. I think the immediacy of the COVID crisis and the way that we're counting the outcomes, uh, for example, in deaths, as opposed to with climate, when we're currently counting it in terms of, you know, atmospheric concentrations of invisible chemicals, it makes it uh, tangible and uh, vivid, and that can help the public and the policymakers react to it uh, more quickly. But that's when we need to communicate clear messages about impacts, about uh, consensus about things that we can do. And, and I really like the focus on co-benefits, you know, all these things we can do that improve our life right away and in ways that we want, they also happen to help the planet. There as well. And obviously I think it's important that there's a balance between the extent to which people feel they have to be responsible for changing their behavior and also the policy led work and the importance that, that governments do the right thing. However, it's very difficult to know the extent to which the scientific advice that is given actually ends up in policy, because obviously the decisions are influenced by many other ideological and economic factors. The key thing is that there should be real transparency and openness for the sake of both scientists, so they feel that they're being uh, respected and, and not being abused in any way, uh, and also for politicians. and importantly for citizens and the general population so they can see what are scientists actually saying and what are politicians actually doing as a result of uh, the advice they've been given. So we need to bring the public on board in decision making about how to address climate change. I think this is why it's really important we're seeing citizens assemblies and other sorts of kind of deliberative uh, discussion and debate um, and actually then you can actually get people to buy into those solutions. Yeah, there is cause for optimism in terms of what we are capable of doing, whether it will be enough is another matter. There, one of the funny things is that CO2 emissions during the lockdown haven't gone down all that much. And that shows you how much this is not an individual level problem alone. That is to say we need structural, you know, we need planning to change how, how, uh, how things are organized. So I see that that's possible through the coronavirus response and I'm hopeful for the future. I think one of the things that our government in the UK hasn't done well enough is community engagement. Really learning from, mobilizing communities to solve problems. It's not just a question of spinning messages to passive audiences. So I think respect people, involve people and learn from people. And so I'm hoping that, uh, you know, seeing that we can uh, make a change together and have positive experiences as a result of it um, will be able to be translated to uh, the climate crisis as well.